Hello and welcome back to Jenna Gets Creative. Today is a special bonus video to mark Remembrance Day, as it's called among the Commonwealth nations. November 11th is the anniversary of the end of World War I, and among the nations who observe it as Remembrance Day, it's a day to honor everyone who has served our countries in wartime, to remember those who've fallen, and to honor our current and future servicemen and women. This day is also called... This day is also observed as Veterans Day in the USA and as Armistice Day in New Zealand, France, Belgium, and Serbia. And it's Poland's National Independence Day directly because of Armistice at the end of World War I. I'm Canadian, so I'm going to focus today's video on Remembrance Day traditions. And out of respect for the gravity of this day, I won't be doing my usual mid-recording calls to action, but I do encourage everyone to discuss this topic in the comments down below. The art piece I'm working on is a poppy on a wooden cross, and you'll understand why shortly. An armistice was signed at the end of an armistice was signed to end World War I by representatives of Germany and the Allied powers at Le Francfort near Compiègne in northern France on the 11th of November 1918. The other Triple Alliance countries had already signed armistice agreements at this point, and Germany was the last to agree to armistice. Also known as the Armistice of Compiègne, it was signed sometime between 5.12 and 5.20 a.m. and came into effect at 11 a.m. This is what the phrase at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month refers to. It's important to note that although this is when the hostilities were formally ended, the war itself was not officially over until the signing of the Treaty of Versailles, which was signed on the 28th of June 1919, seven and a half months after Armistice. Also notable, this was the ninth time that an important treaty was signed at and called the Treaty of Versailles, but generally this is the treaty we're all referring to when we mention it without further specification. Here in Canada, Remembrance Day, Jeu de Souvenir in French, is a statutory holiday in six of our ten provinces and in all three territories. It isn't a stat holiday in Ontario, Quebec, Manitoba, or Nova Scotia. It's generally considered an optional holiday for all of the Atlantic provinces, but Newfoundland and New Brunswick have each decided to honor it. Statutory holiday means that government services are closed, and private businesses that choose to stay open are required to pay their employees accordingly. Generally, this means you earn additional holiday pay if you work the day of the stat, and if you're a full-time employee, you'll often work a four-day week but be paid for five, whether you work the holiday or not. This means most people employed in schools, in medical practices, in the trades, and in corporate jobs, and the full-timers in stores, salons, restaurants, and all that, all get a long weekend, and the management and part-time staff at those places that stay open get extra pay to skip the holiday and serve all the people who choose to use their holiday to shop. I'm not better, I swear. Just a decade and a half of customer service coming out to play here. <laughs> but back to Remembrance Day specifically. In Canada, Armistice Day was originally celebrated on the Monday of the week on which the 11th fell, and this was also our observance of Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving has been officially celebrated in Canada since 1879, and until the end of World War I, it was commonly celebrated on the third Monday of October. Prior to this, the colonies of Upper Canada, today's Ontario, and Lower Canada, today's Quebec, changed the date of Thanksgiving on some special occasions, including the end of the War of 1812 and the end of the Lower Canada Rebellion. The first Thanksgiving after Confederation was actually celebrated in April in 1872. The rest of the time before 1879, it was celebrated in either late October or early November. It was paired with Armistice Day observances in 1921 and remained tied this way until 1931, when Armistice Day became Remembrance Day and held specifically on the 11th, and Thanksgiving returned to being an October thing, with no set observance until 1957, when Parliament decided that Canadian Thanksgiving would be celebrated on the second Monday of October every year, as it still is today. 
The theme of Thanksgiving changed in the years since it was divorced from Armistice Day, but unlike the American holidays association with the pilgrims, in Canada it's mostly loosely associated with the harvest and being thankful for what we have. Among religious groups and households, it's also a time for giving and evangelical outreach. There really isn't an association with Remembrance Day or Armistice at all outside of military households. On Remembrance Day, November 11th, ceremonies are held across the country at war memorials by veterans groups and municipal governments. The National Ceremony, which is televised, is held at the National War Museum in Ottawa, Ontario, which is our country's capital, and this is presided over by the Governor General of Canada, which is a position in Canada's federal parliament that is appointed by the Crown of England as her representative. If you'd like to hear about how that works, I'd love to make a history talk video on that. The Governor General of Canada is mostly a symbolic position these days, and no one holding the position has actually used their role in any significant manner since the King Bing Affair of 1926. For the national ceremony on Remembrance Day, leading up to the start of the ceremony itself, four sentries and three sentinels are positioned at the cenotaph. The ceremony begins with bells tolling in Peace Tower, and this is when members of the armed forces and diplomats, ministers, other special guests, the Royal Canadian Legion, and any royalty and the vice-regal party present arrive at Confederation Square. A trumpet announces the arrival of the Governor General, and then the Viceroy and the Dominion President of the Royal Canadian Legion meet and are escorted to a dais for the Viceregal Salute. Then our national anthem, O Canada, is played. Immediately before 11 a.m., buglers play the last post, and then exactly on the hour of 11 a.m., a gunfire salute is fired and the bells of Peace Tower ring. This is followed by two minutes of silence, which ends with another gun salute. This is followed by the playing of a lament, the bugling of the rouse, and the reading of the Act of Remembrance. Following this, a display by the Canadian Air Force takes place simultaneously with a 21-gun salute, and then the official ceremony closes with, with a choir singing in Flanders Fields. Wreaths are brought up and laid at war memorials around the country at the end of these ceremonies, and at the national ceremony, one wreath is set by an appointed woman known as the Silver Cross Mother on behalf of mothers who have lost their children to war. After the official wreaths have been set, the viceregal and any present royalty meet again at the dais for a playing of God Save the Queen, and then they observe a march of the present armed forces and veterans. At this point, everyone else in attendance is free to leave their tributes at the memorial site. In the weeks leading up to Remembrance Day, veterans groups and cadets organizations sell artificial poppies by donation, and these are worn by most Canadians on the left over our hearts, up to and during our local Remembrance Day ceremony. At the closing of these ceremonies, the poppies are removed and left at the war memorials. At the national ceremony, it has become customary for everyone in attendance to leave their poppies on the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier ever since it was erected at the memorial in 2000. In schools across the country, special Remembrance Day assemblies are held on the school day prior to the holiday in provinces and territories that observe it, or on the morning of the 11th in provinces that don't observe the stat. I attended school in British Columbia, so that's the only school traditions I know, but I imagine it's largely the same across Canada. We will sing O Canada and God Save the Queen. We do play the last post and the rouse, either live or recorded, depending on the availability of skilled buglers among the student body. We recite in Flanders Fields as a spoken poem. Students are encouraged to bring a quarter to school that day to give as a donation to whatever local group has agreed to supply poppies, so everyone has one over their hearts during the assembly. But since this obviously isn't held at a war memorial and in most of the country it isn't even held on the 11th, we keep the poppies on all day. Usually there are speeches given by staff and students both on the history and significance of Remembrance Day and sometimes more personal or current topics surrounding recent history and present day military participation in Canada. In elementary or primary schools, it's common for kids to make artwork involving poppies or other symbols from in Flanders fields, such as the rows of white crosses that marked the graves of fallen World War I soldiers in Flanders. Two minutes of silence is always observed at these school assemblies as well. 
In businesses that remain open on the 11th, it's customary for a member of staff to give a short speech, read in Flanders Fields, or play a recording of the last post over the speaker system immediately before 11 a.m., and then call for an observance of two minutes of silence, followed by the playing of the rouse. It's expected that customers in the store will observe the two minutes of silence along with the staff, but if you've ever worked in customer service, you know that doesn't usually happen. There's a very powerful song written by Canadian folk singer and Paralympic athlete Terry Kelly, a Newfoundlander I might add, who witnessed a rude customer during the two minutes of silence being observed at a store in Nova Scotia. It's called A Pittance of Time, and I'll link the official music video down below. I encourage you to go listen to it if you haven't heard it before. Fun little side fact, Terry Kelly is blind, and in 2002, his album The Power of the Dream was the world's first CD to be released with Braille imprinting on the liner. Even though Canada does have an active military, and we do support our allies around the world to this day, we really do consider ourselves a very peaceful country at our core, and military involvement isn't something the average citizen thinks about. Really, if you aren't a military family and you're not directly involved in government, then remember to stay in any time our military is in the news, which isn't often, our news isn't full of fear-mongering. The average person just plain isn't thinking about war or the military. For kids of non-military families, Remembrance Day is the only day of the year that these things are discussed. On one hand, I'm very thankful for the peaceful culture we have here, and I think it's a blessing that our kids don't have a reason to consider war 364 days out of the year. But on the other hand, I think it leads to a culture of ignorance about our military history and even a devaluing of our current military efforts, and that's sad because it's important. I'd like to close this video by reading In Flanders Fields, and then we'll observe our two minutes of silence together. I hope you'll stay for that. Flanders Fields, the poppies blow, between the crosses row on row, that mark our place and in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Fields. Take up our quarrel with our foe, to you from fallen hands we throw, the torch, be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields.